Hello, this is Jerry Jenkins. I'm going to show you uh, a, something you can install to use in your terminal program in uh, all the major operating systems that uh, will give you an interactive Python shell uh, which is far superior to either idle or running in Python. So first let me demonstrate Python uh, interactive shell. So I'm on a Macintosh, so I'm going to start up Python 3.6 which I've installed by typing Python 3. and uh, so you're in a shell here. I can type in uh, expressions. It will evaluate them and show the result. So this is an interactive shell. I can write programs. So I'm going to import uh, time. And uh, I'm going to define a function. Uh, well, first of all, let's demonstrate a, a method in time. So time.ctime with no parameters returns the current time as a string. And time dot c time with a parameter returns the uh, time at the number of seconds since the beginning of the Unix epoch which we'll see is uh, it's a specific time and date in 1969. So that's all I guess. Suppose we want to pull out the uh, the, f the uh, string for the day of the week it is uh, for what c time returns. So let's define a function uh, called day and we'll pass it t and we want to be able to have it either have any either parameter. So I'm going to set the default to none. And here we're defining a function. We have to remember to indent. And we're going to return uh, time dot c time with that parameter. And then what we want to do is we want to split the uh, string into words. And then we're going to take the first word and return that. Now if I made a mistake here, let me add something extra here, uh, then when we go to use this function we're going to get an error and the only way to do correct this I have to go back and retype the whole function even though there's just one line wrong. Uh, also if you're doing something uh, and you type something wrong uh, you have to retype it or um, if it was an error that you made several lines ago, there's no way to back up. So these are just uh, really plain vanilla Python interpreter that comes with Python. And so we're going to show you a much better way that uh, I've found that if you install it, you'll find you're using it whenever you want to try little pieces of code rather than Python or Id idle. So the way you exit from Python interpreter is either exit or control D. Uh, I'm going to clear my history and then I'm going to start up bpython. So this is the command I want to show you that you can uh, install this uh, module. So first of all you'll notice it has help by hitting F1. So let me hit F1 and you'll see it has all kinds of keys and things you can do. I'm just going to talk about the most popular of them. Uh, so now Again, you can evaluate expressions and evaluates that. Uh, I'm going to do an import. Now, first of all, when I typed I, you'll notice it gives me everything I can type that begins with an I that's in the namespace. So the keywords and uh, variables and method names are available to me. So I could type I M, and now it's suggesting the only thing that I c word I might use is import. I can just hit tab, and it's going to type that for me. And then I can type T. And you notice it looks up all the modules that begin with T, so it's already got some really nice features to help you out. Uh, so we're going to type TI, we want time, so I hit tab to choose the first one. If I wanted the second one, I just hit tab again, and you can actually cycle between them. And then we'll try our t time function, time dot. Now when we hit dot, it shows you all the uh, things that might be appropriate after the dot that are members of the time. Uh, module. So we're, we want C time, so I'll type C, T, and then the complete typing, just hit tab. And then I'm going to hit parentheses. Notice now it's going to pop up uh, with help. So it, it shows me the parameters are expected, what type of object is returned, and then has the doc string that's defined. And this will work for both all the built-in Python modules um, but it will also work with anything you define that has a doc string or parameters. 
Uh, so we want to call it with zero, and you can see it works here. Uh, so let's define our day function. And, uh, oops, I made a mistake. Now if I made a mistake, you can rewind or undo. You just do control R, which stands for rewind, and I can define that again. I'm making uh, none as the default if I don't provide t, and that'll make it easier to call c time with no parameters. And what we want to do is pick off the first word. Uh, so we're going to pick off uh, time dot c time, and we're going to. So there's our parameters, and we're going to uh, look up t, and then we want to re what that returns. We're going to split it into words and then we're going to get the first uh, word which is index of zero and there we are notice also it automatically indented so I didn't have to indent myself and we can try it out day of zero returns Wednesday which is the epic day of uh, today should return Friday which is today's date just to verify that I'll type time dot c time with no parameters and you can see Friday is today's date. So that's pretty cool. So that introduces us to B Python. To exit you type control D. So let's just go over the features again. Uh, B Python you can install to give you an interactive shell that's better than the regular Python or idle. It has IDE like features so it has syntax highlighting, auto indentation, it keeps a history uh, it has a rewind that you can undo back and retype things. It has an autocomplete with suggestions. It has automatic documentation pop-ups for functions. It works in uh, all Pythons and it works on all operating systems. Uh, the major keys you might want to use are F1 to get help and find out about all its extra features. Uh, when you're working with the history you just use the arrow keys like you would in, in uh, the command line in Bash. Uh, you use tab and shift tab to autocomplete, control R to undo uh, back things you've done. Uh, you type you uh, type a function followed by the left print to pop up the help for the function. So F3 will allow you to create a configuration file that allow you to change the behavior of bpython. Um, F7 allows you to open an external editor which will copy what you've been doing to Vim and you can edit it and uh, you can exit with either exit uh, calling exit or doing control D and I'm gonna put links to help you so I'll put a link to the main site on the video description to install it you type pip install bpython or on a Macintosh to install it under 3.6 you would normally do pip3 install python bpython and I'm going to also have a sample color scheme file if you get into doing configuration that will help you out. So those look on the video description for that and please subscribe to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel. You'll see an icon in the lower right to do that and you'll receive notifications when I post new videos. Thank you.